It's so great to see such a good turnout for our free concert interviews tonight. Uh, and we have a couple of interviews planned for you. And I think those who've sat through them for the last couple of nights have found that they really add something to listen to as we get ready for the performance. Uh, so I'm very pleased. I'm Joanne Roberts from CBC Radio 1. I'm the host of All Points West. And I have here with me tonight uh, Emma Gillespie, who's one of the soloists with the Victoria Children's Choir that you'll hear tonight. And of course, the lovely and talented man of humor, who is the director of the Victoria Children's Choir, um, and also quite a fine rural soloist in her own right, but she's here tonight as the director of the choir. And it's great to have you here tonight because one of the highlights of this festival, something we've all been looking forward to, is uh, to hear Beaver's Requiem in F. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Emma, um, because I read something that you wrote on the Pacific Baroque uh, Festival website about the fact that this is a Requiem sung in a minor key, and that presented a challenge. Can you tell us? How the choir dealt with that whole challenge of singing in a minor key? Um, well, it's just, you know, it's just another uh, thing that you have to get your head around. And once you, once you get used to the key, then it's not so, it's not so bad. It's not all that much, all that much more challenging than a major key is once you get your head into it, really. So once you get your head into it, Bieber doesn't make it all that easy, though, because it's not completely in a minor key, is <laughs> it? No, that's true. He, it, no, it is in a minor key, but you know, um, every now and then he'll he'll bring in something that's quite distinctly major, and so it's the the contrast between the two I think that makes it most interesting, and um, so that's part of the challenge of it too is, is to get the contrast between the two of them. And do you have to sort of adjust your ear so you kind of know when you've got it right? Ah, uh, yes, for sure. You have to just. Okay, this is a major chord we have to end on here, so what does that sound like? What does that feel like differently? So that's, yeah, that's a challenge. Now, I know she's sitting right next to you, and we'll ask her in a second. <laughs> but as you were preparing for this piece, what did you hear from Madeline to get your heads ready for it, to get to be ready? What did she tell you about the piece? Before we started, she didn't really tell us all that much of what to expect. She just gave us a CD and said, go home and listen to this, and we were like, home and listen to it. It was kind of, you know, kind of interesting, kind of weird, and it was more when we, when we came back in September, this was in June, when we came back in September that she sort of started to you know, explain to us some more things about it. So. Okay, so now you can have Madeline, the, uh, the microphone. Madeline, how did you move the choir to that point where the music was sounding right for them? The very first and most important thing was to explain to them this had absolutely nothing to do with Justin Bieber. <laughs> and um, once we got over that, we were able to look at it in a different light. Um, what was exciting, we had our very first time we heard this, I think it was at choir camp, when we started to work on the music. Um, I have to say I'm so proud of this choir because we have quite a few uh, singers who've been in the choir a, a long time and have had experience for four years singing with the Pacific Baroque Orchestra. And I think their um, knowledge and skills pulled us to learn this piece a lot faster than we had in the past. And somehow we were able to really get the style of the music because it's the style of performance that makes it so exciting. I think if you tried to sing this music in a very beautiful but completely wrong romantic way, yes. um, you'd be fighting against the text, you'd be fighting against the harmonies, you'd be fighting against the rhythm, and all of those together makes it really very jazzy and exciting for the kids. There's no end of surprises that they pull on me when we sing it. Suddenly it gets even more exciting than we thought. All right, so let's go back and dig, dig in a little further with you, Emma. I mean, um, what did you find big challenging in the piece? Uh, because there's, a, for example, a lot of repeating phrases. Yeah, that's true. The, um, the canons are, are interesting. There's quite a few times when I'll take a, a phrase that's one or two measures long and repeat it and repeat it and bring it in different keys and different, you know, come in and out and the different parts sing it. And I think 
what you said was, it was like watching a tense match, you know? <laughs> so, it goes, so it goes all over the place. And some of the rhythm is very challenging. Um, and you know, to come in, and it's, 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 it's challenging. I think there's one or two bar phrase he repeats 17 times. <laughs> That's a lot. Now, what's the choir's reaction been to the piece? I mean, have they had any sort of fun comments? They've obviously learned to love it. I badly wouldn't have them here if they weren't ready to sing it. But have they had a reaction to it? Yeah, it's been, you know, just because there's so much contrast in it, you know, sometimes we sort of, we're looking at each other and be like, this is really weird, you know, what's up with this part? And then other parts where we're like, oh my gosh, you know, I love this, it's so amazing. And, you know, just some of the harmonies and some of the rhythms and, yeah, it's, the reaction has been as, as varied as the, you know, the piece itself, so. Oh, good. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to read James Young's review of the concert Thursday night, and if you haven't read it, you really should treat yourself to reading the James Young review of, uh, of Reinhardt Young's concert on Thursday night, because he has some nice things to say about the children's choir. And I'm gonna quote him here, he said, um, that the sound was pure, ethereal, mysterious, and gorgeous. The Victoria Children's Choir sang with an impressive sense of style. The Latin pronunciation was excellent. And I must admit, I wanted to ask you about that, Madeline. Is, I mean, it's one thing to sing in Latin, and anyone who's going to do any sacred music will probably do that. But these pieces are challenging. How did you work on the Latin? Did you have a secret there? Uh, we, one of the things that I think is important is to understand Latin, and uh, one of the most fun things that I always find with Latin is to find out how many words are similar in English as they are in Latin, and with the translation we kept going over it and over it, and saying, okay, can you find the word that's important in this phrase, um, uh, Rex Tremende became Tyrannosaurus Rex, and um, things like that, just to get, get the excitement of it, or what was the one that keep, what was she one from Harry Potter. Oh, it's <laughs> there's a part where it talks about um, the Latin word is patronum, meaning like a, a patron, and um, someone would pronounce it patronus because the it was a Harry Potter reference. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter has a patronus. <laughs> it's just yes. protect it's the, yes, it's really the protector, <laughs> which is you know it was very clever, really. <laughs> Secret, yes. Well, <laughs> dig into all those modern references. Um, I want to know, Emma, now that you know this music from the Requiem, are you going to be able to go to Austria on the school trip to travel to Salzburg and Vienna where the music was read and visit the church where possibly even it was sung? Yes, we're going. Uh, the Austrian trip will be definitely very exciting. You know, it's to see really. The, the birthplace of this music, you know, where it, where it came from, because people weren't really writing classical music in North America, it all came from here, and so it's very, you know, it'll be really exciting to, to see where it came from and see the roots of it there. Madeline, I wonder if that did add something to your practices this year, to know that members of the choir would be going to Austria, where the music you were learning had been born. We did really talk about it all that much. It's just sort of reference because we've got our job to do here and this one we won't be taking with us to Austria. Um, there's certainly songs that we are doing that we will be doing there but this one it's, we've, we've talked about that uh, we'll see where because we also learning music with Brooklyn and Mozart and, and so we're going to see places where that music for kids in North America suddenly becomes real. Um, no, I, it's, it, I think the main thing that I found so exciting about this whole process is watching the kids constantly changing the rules. As I keep saying, you know, children play and the rules are always changed. You went left and that means actually you're out. No, I went right and I'm allowed four points for that. <laughs> so, so it's, um, it's it, I, I just remember the first rehearsal with Mark where he drastically changed one way that we're interpreting something and the faces of the kids at first of all was sort of, Huh? And then there was, oh, that's wonderful. They really loved that part. So it's the constant development. You never stop learning when you're performing this music because it just is constantly evolving. Emma, from your point of view, this is the second year you've sung with, with the Baroque Orchestra. 
Um, but you rehearse, as you say, from July until, well, end of January when you actually first get to play with Mark. What's it like when all of this work comes to the point where you step out with the orchestra and hear it all together? Doing it with um, doing it with the orchestra is definitely a, a huge, you know, a huge development. Just because with with the piano accompaniment you can only do so much, but with you know the whole orchestra you just get so much more texture and so much more to the to to the accompaniment to the piece itself. And um, having the tenor and basses as well with us, the tenors and basses with them, so they you know just add a whole another level of harmony that we've never heard before. You know, there's, we do, we do what we do with our <laughs> sopranos and altos, and then, you know, they come in and it's like, there's a harmony I've never heard before. You know, there's another part that hasn't been in it. And so it's so interesting to, to hear that. It just adds so much more to it when we get to do that. Are you nervous about your solos to them? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> it helps to know that you know it really well. I've been rehearsing this for a very long time. For a very long time. Yeah. This is a requiem, which means, you know, it was a funeral mass. This is in a minor key. Is it depressing? <laughs> no, I really don't think so. You know, it's in a minor key, but so much of it is still, you know, there are heavy parts, but there's so lots of it that is, you know, still light. And, and the thing that I found most interesting is that the, the end of the entire piece, the final chord, is a major chord. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> Darn, I didn't know how well, that was supposed to be a surprise. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that was what I, what I found most interesting, because, you know, when you write something in a minor key, you start on a minor chord, and you end on a minor chord, but this ends on a major chord. And so it, it, it felt to me like it was sort of a, you know, a, an uplifting ending to it. And not that the piece is not uplifting, but that the piece, it, you know, it gives just this sense of finality to it that's, it's, uh, it's happy instead of sad. I think I could just add something to that. Um, a requiem in, in the Catholic Church, and Bieber was writing for the Catholic Church, it's not the end, it's a memory, and it's honoring people, but it's also about life everlasting, the promise. Of course, you do have to go through a little bit of judgment and check up on how things went <laughs> uh, to get there, but the point is that, you, that it's about light, eternal light, so it's very positive, I think. Yeah. Well, we are really looking forward to hearing you sing it tonight. It will be a very positive finale for all of us, too, <laughs> ending on a major. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.